these hockey games. What's the logic behind this? I'm not big on the fighting, but it's part of it is you know there's a lot of a lot of talk going on in the ice. Right. Sometimes you got to protect your players. Where Jonathan Taze, maybe if he's getting banged around, you got to have somebody to step in and uh, drop the gloves and send a message to the other team. But we see that a lot more against the Blues. The Blues are they're, they're insane. Yes, they're a the fighting team. Right, yeah. So does every team have an enforcer? Usually, you, know, you hope so, because right. otherwise uh, they're just going to throw you around out there. Right. And who's the back office enforcer? Uh, I would say it's probably uh, a couple guys on defense. I know that uh, sometimes it's supposed to be an enforcer, but uh, I was trying to think of them losing point and right, but our, one of our big guys on offense, one of the wingers, too. Right. Uh, yeah. I can't think of his name right now. Sure. You want to help me out? Hey, Shaw. Sure. Shaw, sure, he's a little guy. He's a little fighter. Very talkative. He's, he's a yeah, he's, he's a gamer out there. Okay, all right. So you you gave some good examples in yeah. the speech about the various symptoms of stress. Did, did you actually do a lot of research? I did. Topic? It was something that I actually was thinking about a lot. I was listening to an, a book, an audio book called uh, Maverick Mindset by Dr. John Elliott, and he kind of looks at things from a different point of view and was talking about stress right. and that top performers use stress and you know they want more stress in their life so that they can use it to flip it around because their body actually performs at a higher level. Right. So it was something that I've been thinking about a lot, but I actually didn't write my speech till last night. <laughs> uh, funny right. coincidence. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we did a very good job. So I definitely had some stress on right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are we keeping time? Yeah. Timers? Yeah? Yes. Yeah. They should be pretty hard. Yeah, all right. Well, Eric Hattenhorn, that's obviously an Irish name, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> are you sure you're Irish? <laughs> you're not German, are you? Uh, no, I don't think so. So, um, did, did you know when your family came to the United States? Oh, you know, I did do some research on it. I can't, I think it's like three generations back. Right. Three or four, somewhere in there. Right. Uh, okay. And does anyone ever spell your name correctly? I mean, the first name. The first thing, oh, <laughs> yeah, you know, okay, okay. Well, I've some yeah. interesting ones there, right. maybe a CH sometimes. Right. But, uh, but in terms of Hattenauer, do all German names with the R end in A U E R? Is it is common, yeah. yeah. So I'll get a lot of, at the end, they'll go Hatten, Schnauzer, Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, there's a lot of interpretations, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Eric, thank you very much for participating today. We'll give you a certificate of appreciation after the competition. Okay. Nice. Thank you very much. I know we've got some uh, dignitaries who've actually uh, arrived in. Did you announce that? Did you announce that? I did not because I'm supposed to recognize the dignitaries and I don't recognize half of them. So <laughs> 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 I am the Boston Division Governor. My name is Christina Perez. Right. Will all the dignitaries just uh, stand for stand a moment? Um, the current dignitaries only at the moment, please. All right. And just give us a quick uh, introduction, please. Lydia Sawyer, North Division Governor. Welcome. Nick Ballas, the Northwest Division Governor. Amy Ashford. Here we go. Uh, area. Uh, Dan Williams, District Logis Logistics Chair. <laughs> Don Weston, Elga. Linda Ritz, Northwest Area 6 Governor. Right. Bruce Schultz, Area 71 West. Tom Yakovich, Area 76 Governor. Ethel Lopte, LGM. Barbara Beckley, E64 North. Melissa Newport, Central South Division Governor. All right, welcome all again. For those of you who did not stand up, do know that it's the worker bees, are the people that really run the organization, all the people that the, the dignitaries are just making <laughs> passes and things like that. Great colleagues, right? Okay, all right. So we've got our first <coughs> contestant. Please welcome Mary Lou Bradner. Mary Lou Bradner. Very 
neighborhood participation because right away we brought in people who have similar backgrounds and similar experiences. And you told us right away what the purpose of the speech was. That was very good. You brought it into two areas. What happens when you go through stress? All the symptoms. And you told us how you're going to deal with it. And you brought in humor, though you're not in the humor speech contest. We did have humor in your speech that was very good. I like the examples that you gave. You gave very pertinent examples about the sports folks, what they go through to release and everything. And then you brought a little bit of science into it, like what your body actually does. You know, you don't know it, but through the body, all the stress is happening, and it can help you or it can hinder you. So that was very good. Also, I like the transition that you did from talking about the physical experience with stress and what that does to you and how you can deal with it. And that is when you brought out what happens at work, how do you deal with it at work. So I like that transition there. So how do you deal with stress? You said, okay, this is the strong points that you can do. This is what you can focus on. This is what you can do to turn around and make it better, make it stronger, and all the participation and practice that people can go through. So that was very good. Your body movements were very relaxed. You made use of the whole area, very good. And also, you didn't use any buzzwords, and you no fancy jargon or anything. You talked about science. You didn't use any big words or anything like that. It was right directly to the right audience, <coughs> right words. And also, your gestures were very good, and everybody could hear you. So that was very good. I liked that very much. You knew your subject, and that make make it very relaxed. The only thing I could think about, um, make it a little bit better. I think there was probably a little stress going on because there were some stumbles within the sentences, but very slight, very minor. But I want to thank you, Eric. You have a very bright future in Toastmasters.
we need to do all this, we need to do that, that would be much better. And then one thing that I noticed that you seem to be sewing in your speech, you were connecting everything with an and, and that I counted about 12 ands, so pretty long sentences. And there were a few odds and ums, I know some you did intentionally, but the other time you want to get rid of the ands and ums when you say your sentence, So all in all, it was a terrific speech. Just include the audience when you're doing the, the episodes and then keep your mouth closed when you say a, say a sentence and then you'll eliminate that. But all in all, terrific speech. Sure, 
if vomiting was a good response to stress or not. Because you talked about the Goldie Hall and how he vomited, but you introduced him as someone that was very successful and played 502 consecutive games. And then you also mentioned in the, um, the Walton example is that he also vomited and he was a, a success. Um, and what you're talking about that there are two ways to handle stress. You said there was the bad way. And so you went over to this side of the room and you started to give that. And I thought then maybe you would go over to the other side and talk about the good ways. But then you sort of got distracted and you're over here still talking about the bad ways. I thought that might have been a good way to do it. But overall, I really enjoyed your speech. I thought it was well organized. You did a great job commanding the stage and using uh, hand gestures. And I really appreciated it as a, as a contestant. Thank you. Evaluation contestant number four, Diane Katowski. Diane Katowski.
but otherwise, I enjoyed your speech. Thank you for taking the time to be here today and spending with us, and I wish you luck in the future. Toastmaster, we have all about.
Northwest class the past fair? We're all over. Last, last year we were in the Northwest Pacific. Right. We meet in the members' homes. All right, yeah. So our meeting today is in April. So right. anyone who wants to come. <laughs> right. And this club is unique because you're based, it's basically a part of the store to roll the different houses. Is that the way it works? Right. Yeah. We have a dinner meeting. So if you're hosting, you provide the entree and everyone else provides the side dishes. And we have a good meal from 7, 8, 8 o'clock. We eat, eat dinner from 8 to 9.30. We have our Toastmaster meeting. So are you picking the broccoli out of good teeth when you're doing the speech? <laughs> 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 okay, all right. Well, thank you very much for participating. Thank you.
<laughs> and anyone that has earned an educational award since April 20th up to November 1st, you come and have a free hot breakfast. How can you pass that up? And you'll hear Dwayne speaking. 8 a.m. Banner Parade. How many clubs have been in the Banner Parade before? Okay, all you need is a 15 second skit. I mean, our speeches are five to seven minutes at least. 15 seconds. What do you get? The winner. Free registration for the conference in the spring. Once again, how can you beat that? 9 a.m. Evaluation contest. 10.30, we have the business meeting. For those of you that don't have to go to the business meeting, some of us do. We have two exciting educational sessions. The first one is Ellen Schnur in Improve with Improv. Just another way to get up there and to get better at giving presentations. The second one is our world champion, Prez, is going to be talking about the journey to the world champion of public speaking. Then we get to lunch. And lunch is extra, it's only $15, they have pretty good food there. And Dwayne Smith will be talking again. Then, 2 o'clock is the red carpet ceremony. All the clubs that, that got distinguished, present distinguished, select distinguished, last year, and some of them have already earned it this year, get to walk the red carpet, the entire club. Get your trophy, go over, we have a photographer to take a picture, you've got pictures of your club getting your trophy. 4 o'clock. I mean, it's just going by. Humorous contest. I mean, it's like going to a comedy club, right? The best of the best of District 30. We're going to hear all of eight presenters. Six o'clock dinner. Yes, it's extra. $30. Great dinner. Here, Dwayne again. And also, we're going to see the people that earn DTM. And then what I am most excited about. For those of you who don't know me, see, I'm ready for Halloween with my nails. <laughs> you got to have fun. So we've added in karaoke. Oh. And on the back of this flyer, it gives you some of the songs that are presently available. First, we're going to have Bob Kleiner, who's a comedian in District 30, and he's going to open us up and get us in the mood. And then, I don't know how I was convinced to do this, Ethel and I and Linda are going to be the first act. We're going to be the Supremes. Huh? <laughs> Prizes and the whole day only cost your entire club, all your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, your co workers $99 for the entire day for all that fun. That's up until October 25th, and I think it goes to like 100. So I hope to see all of you there.